you spent most of your math career in two dimensions, like a piece of paper, left and right, up and down, two dimensions. But here's the thing, you are a three-dimensional being. You can go this way, this way, and this way. So if you are a three-dimensional being, what are you doing studying math in only two dimensions? Well, that is about to change, and math will never be the same. Now, you spend most of your math career looking at two-dimensional grids, just like this one. Two dimensions, X and Y. But here's the thing, you are a three-dimensional being. You can go this way, you can go this way, and we can also go this way. A lot of people get kind of confused when they start plotting points and vectors in three dimensions because they look kind of strange. But I'm going to show you a very simple trick that's going to make sure that you never get confused. Let's check it out. So I'm going to use this awesome 3D calculator from GeoGebra to help you visualize just what exactly a three-dimensional grid even looks like. And that's going to help us start plotting points in three dimensions as well as vectors in three dimensions. And just to get started, I have a very familiar looking two-dimensional grid. You can see I've got an x-axis shown in red. I've got a y-axis shown in green. And we can plot all sorts of points on this axis and we should be pretty familiar with this because we've been doing this forever in two dimensions. For example, I can plot the point negative one, four. And it should be no surprise that it shows up right here. I go backwards by one, I go up by four. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna blow your mind by adding a third dimension. And so up until this point, we've worked with X coordinates and Y coordinates, but today we're gonna introduce a third coordinate called the Z coordinate or the Z coordinate, depending on where you're from. Points in three dimensions have three coordinates, one for each dimension, length, width, height, or depth. We've got three dimensions, so we need three variables. So we stick with X, Y, and Z. This point right here has two coordinates. We have an X coordinate, negative one, and we have a Y coordinate, positive four. That tells me I go this way by one and I go this way by four. But what happens if I add a third dimension? Let me just tack on a two. Now you can see that nothing has changed. But here's the thing. We have an x-axis, we have a y-axis. Where is the z-axis? Now this is the part where your mind gets completely blown because I'm going to totally change your perspective so that you can see this point in three dimensions. I'm gonna grab onto my fancy grid, I'm just gonna drag it, and you're gonna to start to see this thing appear in three dimensions. Now I'm gonna give you a minute to let your eyes adjust here because you totally just shifted from a two-dimensional perspective to a three-dimensional perspective, which is pretty crazy. Now here's where a lot of people start having trouble and it's in visualizing the three-dimensional grid. Some people see that and they say, oh yeah, I see it, I'm in three dimensions, that point is just kind of hovering there above the ground. Well, other people have a difficult time visualizing this. And if you are one of those people that isn't really able to make sense of what you're seeing, that's okay. I'm gonna show you a really simple trick here that's gonna help you make sense of what you're seeing. Now remember, we started looking at a two-dimensional plane. We had the x-axis and we had the y-axis. It looked a little something like this. As it turns out, we, as the observer, were standing at the tip of the z-axis, looking down at the x-axis and the y-axis. So imagine that we're actually up in the air right now, looking downward at the ground. This gray surface, you can pretend, is the ground. If I shift my perspective again, you can see that that axis is actually sort of rising up out of the ground. So now you can imagine that it's almost like you're sort of flying around in an airplane and you're seeing the z-axis sort of popping up out of the ground. Now, typically three-dimensional grids are drawn like this. You'll see the x and the y-axis on sort of an angle and you'll see the z-axis going straight up in the air. If you're still not really able to understand what you're seeing, the simple trick I was telling you about is that you imagine this to be sort of the corner of a room. If you just sort of look around the room that you're in right now and just find any corner where two walls intersect at a 90 degree angle, the y-axis would be the base of one wall and the x-axis would be the base of another wall. And if you run your eyes up the corner of where those two walls meet, up toward the ceiling, that's going to be the z-axis. A lot of people find this simple trick really helps. If you ever find yourself stuck, you can just kind of look around the room and that'll help you understand what you're looking at. And so with that out of the way, we're ready to understand what we're looking at here with this three-dimensional point. We know that we typed in the coordinates negative one, four, and two. Those should be like the directions we use to walk from the origin to get to this point in three-dimensional space. 
Now I'm gonna take a minute to spin my axis back to the perspective that we were looking at before, just so we can make sense of the first two coordinates. We know that we're moving negative one along the x-axis and four along the y-axis. But in order to understand this z-coordinate, we need to shift back to the third dimension. So you can see that I'm actually moving two units upward above the ground. So remember, it's just like you're looking at the corner of a room here and you're moving two units up the wall. So we can use three coordinates to describe the location of that point in three-dimensional space. And if I just spin my grid around a bit, you'll be able to see that x coordinate at negative one. You'll be able to see that y coordinate at four. And you can see that we also line up with that z coordinate of two. And we can play around with random coordinates just by inputting them over here. And I'll leave a link to this calculator in the description so that you can play around with it yourself. So that is points in three dimensions. But let's shift gears a little bit and try to visualize what Cartesian vectors look like in three dimensional space. Now remember, Cartesian vectors are drawn by connecting the origin to a Cartesian point. So the coordinates of this point in two dimensions appear to be one comma two. So I could draw a Cartesian vector from the origin to that point. And as it turns out, it works the same way in three dimensions. So if I give that point a third dimension of three, you can see it's floating in three dimensions, three units above the ground, the Cartesian vector one, two, three would also start at the origin and would just travel in the direction of that point. And as long as you remember the little trick I showed you for visualizing things in three dimensions, this Cartesian vector should make sense. You can see it's starting at the origin and it's traveling in the direction of that point, one, two, three. If we take a look at that other point that we are working with, negative one, four, two, we can see it floating above the ground by two units. If I just switch on this Cartesian vector, it's no surprise that that vector starts at the origin at zero, zero, and heads in the direction of that point to form a nice Cartesian vector in three dimensions. And again, if you just picture that as the corner of a room, that should kind of make sense. Imagine drawing a vector from the very corner of the room toward the center of the room and connecting it to a point that's hovering in three dimensions there. Pretty crazy, right? Corners of rooms will never be the same. And check out one of these videos for more on vectors.